Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Animal Diversity 1, Lecture 23. Today we will discuss about pseudosolomate body plan, this Kalman says. That includes pseudosolomates. In comparison to pseudosolomates, there is a diagram acelomates and solomates. Now we will discuss about internal features in nematodes. The nematode pseudocilome has spacious fluid filled cavity that contains a vitreal organ. There are no mesenteries and this fluid filled cavity creates hydrostatic skeleton. All nematodes are round because body muscles contracting against the silomic fluid or pseudosilomic fluid generate an equal outward force in all direction. Just consider a balloon. If you pour air in the balloon, then this air will inflate the balloon in all directions. Just like that balloon, round worms are rounded. Here you can see in the diagram. So at the upper side there is a mouth and at the bottom there is a inner side so in this diagram you can see different structures are present in the round worm body and basically round worms or nematodes have the rounded body because of hydrostatic skeleton now feeding and digestive system depending upon the environment Nematodes may be free living, may be parasitic. The free living nematodes may be carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, saprobes, or saprotrophs. Carnivores are flesh eater, herbivores feed on plants, omnivores feed on plants and animal both, saprobes that feed on dead organic matter or decomposing organisms are also called as saprotrophs. Now the parasitic species, they may be parasite of plants or the animals, they feed on blood or the tissue fluid of their host. Here you can see the diagram of the grasshopper having lot of parasitic nematodes. These are not vermicelli or these are not the threads but these are worms present in the grasshopper. Digestive system in nematodes that is complete digestive system having mouth, having anus. They have mouth, teeth, jaws or stylets that is sharp or pointy structure leads to buccal cavity, leads to muscular pharynx, then long and tubular intestine that is used in digestion and absorption of food then short rectum is there that will lead to anus. Hydrostatic pressure in the pseudocilum will create the force that will move food from mouth to the anal area or through the alimentary canal. Digestive system. There is a complete digestive system having mouth and anus and specialized organs for breakdown and absorption of nutrients. Now the mouth and retracted fissuring device leads to pharynx. Now ring is there, then intestine and this intestine will lead to anus. Here are some other structures that includes excretory pores, pseudocilome, ovary, cuticle, reproductive pores. Osmoregulation. Water and salt balance in nematodes is done by various systems or two systems. They excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia and urea. There are two unit systems that is glandular systems in aquatic species and consist of ventral gland cells 
and granite cells posterior to the pharynx. Here you can see in this diagram that is pharynx leads to nerve ring and excretory pores and then rendered glands for excretion in the gray color. Then in the figure B there is anterior canal, excretory pore, nucleus, posterior canal and intestine that is excretory duct system. Each gland absorbs waste from pterostelone and empties outside the excretory pore into the environment. Parasitic nematodes have advanced system of tubular system developed from drainage system. Drainage units unite to form a large canal which opens to the outside via excretory pore, which you have seen earlier. Nervous system. Nervous system consists of anterior nerve ring and now extends interiorly and posteriorly so along the length of the nematode may connect to each other via commissaries just like platy helminthes certain neuroendocrine secretions are involved in growth molding cuticle formation and metamorphosis in nematodes here you can see iscaris or nematode that is mouth then head ganglion is there, pharynx, intestine, anus and neuronal system includes ganglion in the head region, then dorsal nerve, ventral nerve along the length of the animal. Then reproduction and development. Most nematodes are dioecious having male and female separate, dimorphic, it means male is something different with female and the female is larger, male is being smaller. The long coiled gonads lie free in pseudocinome. The female system consists of a pair of convoluted tubules. Each ovary is continuous with an oviduct. Proximal end is swollen to form a seminal receptacle. Each oviduct becomes a tubular uterus and two uteri unite to form a vagina that opens to the outside through the genital pore. The male system consists of single testis that is continuous with the dog pasta fronts, eventually expands into seminal vesicle. Here you can see in the diagram there is male, there is female. That is, if you start from the anterior end, that is pharynx, then pharynx, nerve ring, excretory systems are same, intestine is same. Now comes to the difference point that is ovary in the female and testis in the male. Ovary leads to uterus and uterus leads to vulva whereas testis that leads to sperm duct and then copulatory spicule now this spicule will insert the sperm into female vulva the seminal vesicle connect to cloaca males are commonly armed posterior flap of tissue that is bursa or that spicule, copulatory spicule that aids the male transfer of sperm into female genital pore during copulation or vulva in the vulva. After copulation, hydrostatic forces, pseudocelome move each fertilized egg to gonopore and to genital pore. The number of eggs produced varies among different species. Some nematodes produce only several hundred, whereas others produce thousands of hundreds of thousands of eggs daily. Here you can see the mating that is male and female is there. So male will insert 
comes into female or vulva or at the gonopore. Some nematodes give birth to larva or have the ovoviviparity. Some have ovoviviparity. External factors, temperature, moisture, influence development or hatching of the eggs into larva. Some parasitologists refer to it as a juvenile and most adult structures. The larva or juvenile structure undergoes four molds. Although in some species, the first one or two molds may occur before the eggs hatch. You can see Ascaris lumbricardus life cycle. First of all, Ascaris adults in the small intestine of the human. Then, this Ascaris will be present in the feces in unfertilized egg that will not undergo further development. Here you can see the point 2. Then, fertilized eggs are there. Basically, two types of eggs are present in the feces, the unfertilized and fertilized. Unfertilized will not go under any development and fertilized eggs will go under the development. Then, this developing egg have been converted into larva in third stage, that is embryonated egg with L3 larva. Now, this goes to stage 4. That is ingestion of embryonated eggs. When these embryonated eggs are ingested by humans, then further development will take place. If you eat the contaminated food with feces, scarus can enter into your food or can enter into your body. Now, eggs are entered into your body digestive system then in the fifth number hatch larva enter in circulation and migrate to lungs in the sixth stage they will migrate to lungs and in the seventh stage these larva are cuffed up and swallowed re-enter in the gastrointestinal tract maturation proceeds into small intestine so from the lung they will go into oral cavity and then again into digestive system and will attach to the small intestine, will grow and will form the adult form. Then again eggs will remove into feces and this cycle will go and go and go. And you cannot remove a scarus by your own will only but through medications. Thanks.